Good morning, my name is Catherine Forsyth. I'll be talking to you about protected area expansion in the succulent Karoo. I'm giving this talk on behalf of my colleagues in the land program at WWF, who all work tirelessly towards expanding South Africa's conservation estate in priority landscapes like the succulent Karoo. I would like to say thanks to the organizers for inviting me to give this presentation and for their hard work in putting together this online conference. My talk today is gonna to start with an overview of the succulent Karoo biome, I'm then going to talk about the rise in conservation and protected area expansion in the succulent Karoo and some of the achievements to date. I will then give an overview of the WWF expanded program of work in the succulent Karoo and talk about some of the challenges conservation and protected area expansion face in the biome. The succulent Karoo is an internationally recognized biodiversity hotspot. This means it has been identified as one of the areas that contains an inordinate amount of biodiversity compared to much the rest of the globe. This region, which falls mostly inside South African borders, is home to over 6,000 species of plants with a remarkable degree of endemism, with approximately 40% found nowhere else. This arid region contains almost one third of the world's succulent species and is the most biodiverse desert on this planet. Not only is the succulent crew diverse in plant life, but also in other taxa, such as the reptiles. The succulent crew stretches from its eastmost point in the Eastern Cape through the Little Karoo of the Western Cape, up through the Tunk Karoo, into the Rockefelt, and into Namakwaland, and then along the west coast of the Northern Cape. It then extends across the border into Southern Namibia as well. This vast area, known for its tiny plant treasures and expansive views, is close to 8 million hectares and covers roughly 6% of South African land area. Despite covering 6% of the land area, the proportion of South Africa's population that inhabits this area is much lower. The average population density across the succulent crew is less than five people per square kilometre. This is compared to the national average of roughly 45 people per square kilometre. Even then, a large proportion of the population in this biome is concentrated in a few larger towns like Springbok, Lutzville and Vredendal, the Robertson Valley, as well as the Little Karoo Valley. Looking at the most recent national land cover data shows that most of the biome is classed under natural vegetation categories like low shrubland, as well as bare areas, which in this biome might have extremely low vegetation cover. On the map, these are depicted in green. Only a small proportion of the land cover, roughly 2%, is considered agriculture, shown in orange. This is mainly made up of dryland agriculture, but there is some amount of irrigated agriculture, particularly along the Breda River and the Oliphant River. An even smaller footprint is covered by the more highly modified land cover categories like mining, which is shown in red and is mainly concentrated along the northwestern coast, and built up areas around towns and settlements, which is shown here in black. Over the past 20 years or so, there has been an increasing population across the succulent Karoo, but this has mainly been in line with national levels of population increase. Since 1996, there has been an increase from just under half a million people to now over 600,000 people. These changes haven't been uniform across the biome. Some areas like those surrounding Springbok and in the West Coast District Municipality have seen increases in population. Other areas have seen decreases across the same period. The most recent National Biodiversity Assessment placed the succulent Karoo third slowest in terms of recent rate of loss of habitat. This is only behind the other two arid biomes, the desert and the Nama Karoo. The rate of habitat loss was more than 10 times less than that in the grassland biome. If we look at the change in land cover between the 1990 national land cover and the 2018 national land cover, then we can get an idea of where these changes are taking place. At a quick glance, unsurprisingly given the large proportion still considered natural in 2018, there has not been a significant amount of change across the biome as a whole, indicated here in grey. If we zoom into certain areas, however, the changes in the trends become a little easier to see. There has been an overall decrease in agricultural footprint. Some of these have returned back into natural or barren categories. It's worth noting at this point that the move away from agriculture from a biodiversity point of view does not necessarily indicate that these areas are restored, but rather they just no longer resemble agricultural land. Proper mapping of degradation is something that needs to happen at a much finer scale, and is in fact a research area that we are funding in the succulent Karoo. 
There has been an increase in built up areas, mainly conversion of natural land cover classes on the outskirts of towns and settlements, which is unsurprising given the increase in population density in these areas. In some areas, you can see an increase in agricultural developments, like here along the Breda Valley. There has also been an increase in mining footprint, also mainly conversion of natural land cover categories. And these trends tend to be concentrated along the northwest coast. Combining all of these trends and states together gives us a pretty good broad understanding of the succulent Karoo. It's a large biome that houses incredible biodiversity, but with a relatively low population density, and which is mostly still unmodified. In some ways, this seems like the ideal situation to support protected area development. The choice of where to set up and expand protected areas isn't nearly as constrained as in some other biomes, which have much less remaining intact areas and heavy competition for other land uses. Because area isn't at nearly as much of a premium as some other biomes, in the succulent Karoo, it means you need to prioritize where the most crucial areas for conservation are. This can be hard in such a diverse landscape filled with many range restricted species, including those that might be limited to only a few localities. There has also been a long history of grazing in the succulent Karoo, originally by large herds of game, now by livestock, which are increasingly confined to much smaller areas. Some regions have suffered from overgrazing and degradation as a result, which has been recently exacerbated by the drought. This can result in large areas which may not be in the best state for conservation, which is something that also needs to be considered when prioritizing where to expand the conservation estate. While the succulent Karoo may not have had heavy competition for other land uses previously, there is now an increasing interest in land for mining as well as for the renewable energy sectors. Together, if you were able to map these areas accurately, current and planned, you would find a much smaller available area for potential protected area expansion and other conservation compatible land uses. While we understand that there is absolutely a need to shift South Africa to greener energy solutions, there are ways in which this can be done which would mitigate the more adverse environmental impacts and at the same time allow for effective conservation and protected area expansion. It is important to strike a balance between other important land uses that support the local economy, but at the same time don't diminish the tourism value of the region through interrupting important viewsheds. Another challenge is that the succulent Karoo, and especially the Northern Cape mandated conservation agencies, are often drastically under-resourced. For the largest province in South Africa, the Northern Cape has relatively few staff members and resources to help manage and expand their protected area estate. This is also further constrained by the extremely large distances across the province and often head offices sitting in Kimberley, far from many of the protected areas. It is within this undercapacitated framework that protected area expansion has to be very careful about considering where to go, what the priorities are, but also where management authorities are willing to take on the responsibility of any additional land. The Protected Area Network, as it stood in 2019, covers approximately 8.5% of the biome. This may not sound like much, but it's actually an incredible achievement, as the majority of this has only happened in the past 30 years or so. This has to be up there as one of the biggest achievements in terms of South Africa's Protected Area Network expansion. This achievement didn't suddenly arise out of nowhere, but is built on a long history of conservation in the succulent Karoo. Professor Tim Hoffman, who is the Leslie Hill Chair of Plant Conservation at UCT, and this year's winner of the WWF Living Planet Award, gave a wonderful synopsis of the rise of conservation in the succulent Karoo at this year's Arid Zone Ecology Forum. He proposed that conservation in the biome began long ago with the first people who inhabited and used these landscapes, millennia before the arrival of European settlers, these hunter-gatherers and early pastoralists used to move across the climatic zones in the region, and they understood the episodic nature of this environment and worked with rather than against it. Throughout the early 20th century, a suite of different botanists started to bring attention to the incredible diversity of the biome, and in particular, much work in the 70s and 80s solidified the importance of the region for botanical conservation at a global scale. And this resulted in the succulent Karoo being named an international biodiversity hotspot. If we look at a basic timeline of the past 30 years, we can start to understand how protected area expansion in the succulent Karoo has grown so rapidly. 
Some institutions have had a long history of working in the protected area expansion in the succulent Karoo, such as the mandated government authorities like Sand Parks, SANB, the Northern Cape Department of Environment and Nature Conservation, otherwise known as DENC, and Cape Nature. In 1995, the Leslie Hill Succulent Karoo Trust was established by the late Mr. Leslie Hill. This trust was established with WWF as the sole beneficiary and the main objectives, which is the preservation, restoration, conservation and promotion of plant species indigenous to the Karoo with a focus on specific parts of the crew, including but not limited to the Knersflakta, Namakwaland, Southern Richtersfeld, and the Inselberg regions of Bushmanland. In the early 2000s, through international funding, the Succulent Karoo Ecosystem Planning Project, or otherwise known as SCEP, began. This process involved extensive input from researchers, government, NGOs, academics, as well as private sector and the local communities. This process helped understand the patterns and processes that occur across the succulent Karoo, as well as what would be required to safeguard these for future generations. SCEP helped identify priority areas for conservation and set conservation targets and goals for the next 20 years. Incredible momentum and achievements were developed in the first 10 years of SCEP, after which much of the funding came to an end. SCEP has continued but to a lesser extent, with the main baton of protected area expansion in the succulent Karoo has been handed over to government agencies and WWF through funding with the Leslie Hill Succulent Karoo Trust. The Leslie Hill Succulent Karoo Trust and WWF partnerships main focus was land purchase, where WWF would negotiate the fair sale and purchase of private land in priority areas and sign management agreements with the relative relevant conservation agencies to incorporate the land into management of the park or reserve. Over the past decade or so, there has been an increasing diversification of the methods for protected area expansion that have been implemented. WWF, with funds from the Leslie Hill Succulent Crew Trust, implements a number of projects in partnership with key organisations in the landscape to try and support protected area expansion, particularly through biodiversity stewardship agreements. One of these projects includes Cape Nature um, and supporting their already established biodiversity stewardship program in key focus areas such as the Little Karoo, Brida River Valley and Canares Flakta. Another partnership is with Wilderness Foundation Africa where we fund their Northern Cape land program which helps facilitate biodiversity stewardship agreements and supports expansion with both sand parks and DENC. We also partner directly with DENC to increase capacity within their biodiversity stewardship program through key positions and activities to help them develop and implement their Northern Cape protected area expansion strategy. We've also partnered with Conservation South Africa and their important work in the communities in the Cummiesburg region, which support and sign conservation agreements with local small stock owners. All of these projects combined help fill key gaps in the landscape and strengthen partnerships to help facilitate effective protected area expansion in the succulent Karoo. These projects have been now running for five years and are really starting to gain momentum in the landscape. With this increasing momentum from different partners working in the landscape, it is not surprising that we see a rate of expansion of protected areas in the succulent Karoo also increasing. WWF recently commissioned a review of the succulent Karoo Protect an Area Network by Dr. Phil Desmet just to see how far we've come and what is left still to be done. Since 1993, the Succulent Crew Protected Area Network has increased from less than 100,000 hectares to over 650,000 hectares. Across the biome, the national conservation target is now more than a third of the way to being achieved. Of the 79 vegetation types present across the Succulent Karoo, two thirds now have some type of protection. Here we can see the breakdown of the number of vegetation types falling into different protection categories from not protected, which is still at 34% in the lightest shade, through to well protected, which is in the darker shade and stands at 14%. The succulent Karoo protected area network is made up of a combination of different protected area types. The main contributors are state run national parks and provincial nature reserves but a not insignificant proportion is made up through private nature reserves and contractual parks, which together are about a third of the protected areas currently in the succulent Karoo. 
almost one third of the protected area network has been expanded through WWF and associated trusts like the Leslie Hill Secular Karoo Trust, but also importantly, the National Parks Trust of South Africa, making them combine the second biggest contributor to the Succulent Karoo Protected Area Network. Again, there is also a growing role for land owned by private and community entities contributing to this protected area network. Now that we've had an overview of the Succulent Karoo Protected Area Network as a whole, let's zoom in to see what this practically looks like at the level of a few reserves. Kukab Nature Reserve is located in the Northern Cape, approximately eight kilometers outside of Springbok. This is a provincial nature reserve operated by Denk. The reserve is known for its incredible springtime floral displays, which contrast against its many quiver trees and rocky outcrops. The original reserve, which was first proclaimed in 1966, covered approximately 15,000 hectares up until the early 1990s. In the late 1990s, WWF, through funding from the Leslie Hill Succulent Crew Trust, purchased the first properties to extend the reserve to the east. This was then further expanded through an offset agreement to the south of the reserve, and then two more properties were purchased by WWF, the most recent this year. Collectively, this was achieved by the joint efforts of WWF, Wilderness Foundation's Northern Cape Project, and DENK as the management authority of the reserve. The park now covers 35,000 hectares, more than double its original size, and covers a range of vegetation types, including the transition zone between succulent Karoo and the Bushmanland vegetation types. Furthermore, neighboring Kukab to the east is a new nature reserve that was declared earlier this year through stewardship agreements. This was also brought about through the joint efforts of the projects that WWF supports with Wilderness Foundation and DENK, with funds from the Leslie Hill succulent Karoo. This new protected area finally brings a significant area of the previously unprotected Bushman and Inselbergs into the conservation estate. Located north of the Olifants River in the Matsukama region of the Western Cape is the relatively young Knez Flukta Nature Reserve. This reserve was declared in 2014 and the land for this reserve was purchased by WWF through the Leslie Hill Succulent Karoo Trust and is now managed by Cape Nature. This area is known for its characteristic white quartzite plains, which from a distance may seem desolate. But if you get up close, you find yourself among incredible diversity of dwarf succulents that inhabit these quartz patches. This reserve is home to about 1500 plant species, many of which are endemic to these quartzite plains. The original land purchased for this reserve was approximately 85,000 hectares which has now been further extended to approximately 112,000 hectares through additional purchases by WWF with funds from the Leslie Hill Succulent Crew Trust. Work is still ongoing in this landscape to consolidate the Knez Flukta Nature Reserve through a variety of different protected area expansion mechanisms, including biodiversity stewardship with private landowners as well as the local community in partnership with Cape Nature. The Tunkwa Karoo National Park, managed by Sand Parks, is situated 70 kilometres to the west of Sutherland and straddles the western and northern capes. It covers an altitudinal gradient from the dry, desert-like valley bottom in the west up onto the Rockefeller Escarpment in the east. From its first declaration in 1986 at approximately 27,000 hectares, this park now covers over 140,000 hectares. Over the past 20 years, through both the Leslie Hills Succulent Crew Trust and the National Parks Trust of South Africa, this reserve has been expanded by a further 25%, mostly along the eastern edge. In addition, Sand Parks, WWF and Wilderness Foundation Africa are currently working to create a stewardship corridor between this reserve and the Cedarberg Mountains in the west, creating an interprovincial mega reserve. Since 2015, through funds from the Leslie Hill Succulent Crew Trust, WWF has implemented an expanded program of work in the Succulent Crew. Over the past five years, this program has provided dedicated support within WWF to help achieve the objectives of the Leslie Hill Succulent Crew Trust. Through this program, as I mentioned earlier, WWF has partners with a range of different key players in the region to promote protected area expansion. In terms of hectares secured through purchase, over 50,000 hectares have been secured into the conservation estate in the past five years. It's important to mention that these purchases are always done in close collaboration with the relevant management authorities, whether it be Denk, Cape Nature or Sand Parks, who sign management agreements and agree to take on the management of these properties. In terms of hectares 
under biodiversity stewardship agreements, almost 60,000 hectares have been secured in the past five years, with almost double that still pending or in process and likely to be added in the next coming years. These agreements are signed with landholders who wish to declare and protect their land for conservation in perpetuity. A significant proportion of this has been through the Cape Nature Phase 1 project, which secured an amazing 40,000 hectares in the Western Cape through biodiversity stewardship agreements. In our partner project with Conservation South Africa, conservation agreements have been signed with communal land users that graze over nearly 90,000 hectares on communal land. In addition to the hectares secured through partnerships, the WWF expanded program of work has achieved a number of complementary outcomes that help support the protected area expansion within the biome. These include building capacity within WWF, protected area expansion, exploring biodiversity offsets as a mechanism for expansion, refining the land valuation and negotiation processes within WWF, exploring conservation servitudes as an alternative protection mechanism, land database management for properties purchased through the Leslie Hill Settle and Karoo Trust or the National Parks Trust of South Africa. We've also funded and implemented our first PhD fellowship, which mapped land degradation in the Macquiland. And we've also helped to assist build capacity and other key partners and institutions. Over the next five years, the four main objectives for the expanded program of work include to secure land for conservation in the biodiversity rich priority areas of the succulent Karoo, to explore and develop alternative or parallel conservation regimes in the succulent Karoo, to address immediate and long term threats to the biodiversity rich areas of the succulent Karoo, and to ensure the long term sustainability of conservation in the succulent Karoo by pursuing socially relevant, just and equitable solutions. Even with the succulent Karoo protected area network growing in leaps and bounds, there are a number of threats to the biome that cannot be ignored. These include mining, renewable energy development, overgrazing, the illegal trade in succulent plants, drought and climate change, as well as the conversion of land to agriculture in certain areas that have access to water. Some of these threats may seem overwhelming. However, some of them also may provide opportunities that may not be immediately apparent. For example, some of these activities like renewable energy generation are necessary. If planned properly and limited to areas that do not constrain or impact on protected areas, the optimal use of biodiversity offsets could help consolidate and expand protected areas in strategic ways. Although grazing might be seen as a threat, under certain situations it could be used as a tool for management where game species have been long been removed. Grazing reserves or multi-use conservation landscapes could also help include communities in benefiting from the management of conservation areas. A lot has been achieved in protected area expansion in the succulent Karoo over the past few decades. While there is increasing pressure from a number of different threats, and some of these might require some innovative and strategic thinking about how best to proceed, I have a feeling that we're really just getting started. All of the successes to date, and all of those that will be achieved in the future, will not be due to the work of any single person nor even any single organization. These achievements have only been made possible on the backs of many people and many years of hard work through partnerships. Partnerships between generous donors, conservation NGOs and academics, partnerships between willing government agencies and people living in the landscape, and partnerships between passionate and hardworking people across all of these spheres. Our hope is that we can continue to build and strengthen these varied partnerships across the succulent Karoo landscape and rise to meet the many real challenges that face this biome in the coming future. Thank you very much for listening to my talk and I will welcome any questions.